Hey everyone, welcome back to the Valencia Career Mode, it's Season 1, Episode 4. And before we get started, I just wanted to say, I know there hasn't been a lot of uploads in the past month. I've had a lot on my mind and I wanted to think about what direction I wanted to take with my channel, but there's a lot more coming in March, guys, so stay tuned. I've shortened the videos a little bit, the content will stay the same, but this will allow me to upload more consistently and hopefully the viewing experience will be even better for you guys, so stick with me. Like I said, this is episode 4, and in the previous episode, we ended off with a defeat against Athletic Bilbao 3-2, and it was hard to take because we had decent possession, and we actually went up 2-0, and that's why it's so disappointing, because we got caught out with that high line we played, we just weren't ready for Inaki Williams. We had decent amount of possession, like I said, but you can tell by the heat map, it wasn't dominance close to their net, they kept us at bay, and they launch their counterattacks from higher up the pitch. So we need to rectify that. And you can see by the goals they scored, it was from the same area. And the key here is you can see their assist came from way out. And it was balls over the top and threw balls into Inaki Williams and other forwards. And it just killed us. So we need to do a better job. I made a tactical error. I should have dropped the high line. We just weren't ready for it. But I guess there are certain managers, even Bielsa, who recently got fired who just are incapable of change and maybe maybe we do just need to stick to our system but for now we're just not good enough to play against the big boys our players aren't good enough and we can really tell how badly we need someone at CB Paulista was a major loss for us guys I played Vaz I tried to counter what I thought was coming from Inaki Williams and he did a better job than Rachis would have but it just wasn't enough and Racic himself, he played CDM, his natural position, and he was exposed. He got overrun, and he's just not good enough yet. Our players around him aren't good enough yet to dominate teams like Athletic Bilbao who blitz you like this. So there definitely has to be a change. And even Guedes came after the game, and he's like, why didn't I get subbed off? I could have been helpful. You know what? It wasn't our best performance, and frankly, we need to do better going forward. The upcoming schedule is a bit of a mixed bag. There is games against Barcelona and Villarreal, but also against minnows like Cadiz, and that's where we have to pick up full three points, guys. We're ninth in the league. 11 points after seven games isn't bad, especially since we've played against teams like Sevilla, Real Madrid, even a tough game against Bilbao, but now it's time to bounce back, and there's no better game to do so than to play a minnow like Cadiz. We can really boss this game with our system, guys, especially since the way they're setting up is just to counter you. They're dropping back, playing direct balls, playing long balls, and just taking what they can get. It's a 4-4-2, two banks of four, very predictable. And the only thing that they do slightly differently is abuse and overload wide areas. Lozano is going to drift wide into those channels, hold up the ball. Their wide midfielders are staying wide, and the fullbacks are overlapping them. So there's a high emphasis on that sector of the field, and that's where they'll look to create their opportunities. That's also where their quality lies. Alejo and Lozano are legitimately decent players who can cause us some problems with their skill and physicality. So we're going to have to watch out for that. I'm not changing too much. Mosquera I'm bringing in at CB. I'm looking for some solutions here. And he's legitimately a very good young player. I want to test him out. It's a perfect game for him. And I'm going to put Vas out wide instead of Musa to give us a little bit more passing quality. Because I really want to dominate Cadiz and show them how we can just obliterate them. We actually started this game off quite opportunistically with Vega having a great chance from the outside and it hit the crossbar, it was so close. But after this it was predictable long balls from Cadiz and us getting the ball back and just dominating possession, dominating play. There was a lot of passes and a lot of instances where we brought it out wide, quickly brought it back into the center and then abused situations like this where Fast ghosted it on the far post and that was so close. And we replicated this play throughout the first half and it was just a dominant performance. Cadiz was a no-show and we just dominated them. Another play here was a 1-2 for Vega, and he puts it just wide. But it was so great from us, and it was only a matter of time before we scored. Movements off the ball were excellent, and the false nine like Vega dropping 
created so much space. There was so much confusion amongst the Cadiz players and so many opportunities for us. Eventually, late on in the first half, we capitalize. Vega gets one shot blocked, but then he volleys it into the back of the net, guys. What a goal from Vega. And now that we've scored, the floodgates will open for the second half. We mounted the pressure on Cadiz right from the get-go, and it paid off fairly quickly. Vas from a central position spoon-feeds Vega, and that's the easiest goal he'll ever score in his entire career. It was like a few yards out, and we just dominated Cadiz. It really was that bad defensively from them, because they were like pylons. We were passing inside their box like they didn't exist. It was bad from them. Like, they couldn't touch us. We were getting shots from like a few yards out consistently. Like, every few minutes, it was that bad. Offensively, they weren't asleep at the wheel. They did counter fairly well and got a few opportunities, especially from those wide areas, like I said. They bring it back, and just outside the box, they have a great shot saved by Mamardashvili. So, they did do things offensively, but defensively, they were woeful. We were getting balls back and just harassing them all the time. Look at this. I am baffled at how we aren't up, like, far 5 nil. It was that bad defensively from them. Eventually, I decided to bring on some subs... Just young players to give him a go. I really felt comfortable in this game. We were getting anything we wanted. It was just the finish that was lacking. And like I said, they were getting a few opportunities. This was a very nice ball in. They played it around and that maybe deserved a goal. Another great save from Mamardashvili. But we continued to play our football and just moved it around side to side. And we cut it back here and Vallejo just finds himself in acres of space inside the box and just buries it. 3-0 guys, just coasting easily and that was a very nice game a very nice bounce back from that Bilbao this is exactly what we needed we dominated them simple formality the stats say it all guys it was a truly dominant performance six expected goals 64 percent possession and if you look at the heat map so much possession in their half in their final third and even in their box, spells of possession up to 78%. It really was outstanding from us. If you look at the goals we scored, they were from central areas, the extension of those two posts. That's exactly where you want to get them from. And it was a stark difference from, for example, how Athletic Bilbao scores their goals. Not passes from deep, passes from much closer, even inside the box. And that's exactly what you want to see. The standout performer by far was Vega. And it wasn't just for his two goals. He had all his dribbles completed, a very nice passing accuracy, but the most impressive thing was his movement off the ball as that false nine, just dropping into midfield into these little pockets and pulling apart the Cadiz defense, just wrecking havoc. He was linking up play very well, both in build-up and in chance creation, and then getting into the penalty box to get shots on goal. It was a complete performance from Vega, outstanding. A quick update on the youth department. There's a number of players we found both in Portugal and Spain that are quite quality. It's month two so far. We have to wait the full six months according to my rule before we can sign them. But there's going to be plenty to choose from. We're going to be bolstering our youth setup and bringing in as much of these players through the ranks as possible. That is the plan for this Valencia career mode so far. Salinas is our best prospect. He's increased by one overall. We've had him from the beginning and I've changed him now to train as a target man. I've had some great discussions in the comment section with you guys about what position he could potentially become. And there was ideas floated that maybe a right back and truly he can be any position. I'm slightly leaning towards a more offensive role. That's the only reason I've put him on the target man. But this again can change. So far though, he's growing very nicely and he is going to be a peach to play with. All right, our next game is against Barcelona, guys. It's the master versus apprentice matchup. It really is because possession-based football is synonymous with Barcelona and the 3-4-3 Cruyff diamond that we play he originally implemented in Barcelona and the effects have been felt through the Guardiola years and up until now they set up nearly identically to us the only major difference is their width they play a lot more narrow we play with 100 width other than that it's the same thing slow build up possession based football attacking football and a high line they set up in a 4-3-3 
false nine, we set up in a three, four, three, but the principles are the same. Triangles, a lot of possession, and then you've got players like Depay in that false nine role, dropping into midfield, allowing other players like Coutinho to get forward into the space, just as we have Soler. And then you've got the wingers, Fati, another beneficiary of this space, and Dembele staying wider, taking players on one-on-one, -on -one, just like Cruyff wanted to. Then you've got Busquets anchoring everything, and fullbacks like Alba bombing forward, creating numbers in the offense so it's literally copy paste to our system and the threats are the threats that we have the pie in that false nine role you saw vega just dominate cadiz and he's gonna try to do the same thing coutinho is a little bit maybe fallen out of grace recently i don't want to use the word washed up because he's doing decently in aston villa but in the game he still has a lot of skill and we can really hurt you and then you've got great wingers the wingers that we maybe lack they have they have fati they have Dembele. Great dribblers, great pace, and they can always hurt you. We're going to go with a 3-4-3. I'm not going with a 4-3-3 variant, and I want to see if I can outpossess Barcelona. This is going to be a great challenge for me. Guilamon comes in at CDM, and Racic goes to that CB as intended, and we're going to see how this works. The high line that both teams use was by far the determining factor in how this game played out because there was so much space at times. I mean, look at this. Counters after counters were coming. Barcelona pressed high. We had to play out from the back. And when we did so successfully, I mean, look at the amount of space. Acres of it. Vega runs onto it, but the fullback is fast enough to disturb his shot. But that's exactly how this first half played out. Barcelona had some extended periods of position, we did, there was some counters on both sides, finally Barcelona gets it, Coutinho, a lovely piece of skill, and he caresses it into the back of the net, guys, 1-0, and I'm not surprised, Barcelona's a good team, and that's a beautiful piece of skill, a well-placed shot that beat Silasen, but we didn't hang our hats, we tried to come back, and we played out from the back quite well, other than the few losses of possession, we were very good in this department, and we countered, and Guedes was on his bike, he surged into the box in the 27th minute, he gets a shot, it's a tame one, but he finishes off the rebound, guys, 1-1, and it's a decent start against Barcelona, a little bit unorthodox, I thought it would be more of a midfield battle, heavy possession, and it was, but there was also some counter opportunities. Now, Barca would continue to try to get balls into the box, work it in, and we had our counter opportunities, but we slowed down, towards the end of the first half because there wasn't enough energy to continue just running at them and we tried to play it around. We get a decent opportunity here, but Barcelona does well to defend it. The game quieted down a little bit in the second half. It wasn't always a tennis match and there was some good possession football, some good passing, especially from Barcelona. Silky smooth at times, one-touch football that really created some good opportunities. Not the least of which was that one saved by Silasen. But they varied it up and they gave it to Dembele, isolated on the wing. And he did some weird things like chuck it into the box. But Barcelona got some good distance chances off of it. So there was different things being thrown at me. At some point I decided that if the game was going to go back to being counter-attacking football, which I thought it was because... Barcelona was going to open up and try to win. Musa and Moriba would be great subs. So I subbed them on. We had one more chance here from distance and it was just a save from their goalkeeper. And then finally the game did open up in the way I thought it would. Barcelona had a counter and their subs proved devastating, guys. Iago Aspas feeds Vela. He takes one touch and he just volleys it into the back of the net. 2-1, guys. And that's exactly what you do. You don't have a lot of space when you get it. Everyone's rushing back. He takes one touch and buries it. And then we had one last chance in the final minutes of the game. Another counter. Moriba lays it out for De Ketlar. But again, it's Barcelona's fast fullback who gets back and disrupts the goal. It's a loss. 2-1, guys. The master wins with the apprentice. It was a pretty even game. The stats confirm it. 50-50 about in possession. Amount of chances and expected goals were about even. If you look at the heat map, Barcelona had a little bit more presence in our half, in our final third. So that's definitely something we need to work on. And as our players get better, as we get better versed in our tactic, this will come naturally. 
It was even in terms of spells of possession. We had a little bit, they had a little bit. There was counter opportunities for both sides. They had that little bit of extra quality in the finishing department. They were playing at home and so they won the game. But it was pretty even. I was quite encouraged by what I saw. And Guilamon had a great performance, guys. It's 6.9, so it doesn't show it, but he was exactly where he needed to be in that CDM role. He was getting into positions and being an outlet in the buildup, but also adding a little bit in the offensive phase as a recycler. And his spreading of the ball was excellent as well. So great play from him, and maybe he's our long-term solution at CDM. Who knows? All right, so we're eighth in the league after that game with 14 points, only a few points off our target, which is European competitions. We need to win our next game, and it's a very winnable one against Mallorca. Now, they're going to set up quite differently than Barcelona. They're going to drop off, respect us a little bit more, and they're not playing that insanely high line. So it will play out a lot differently than the other game. It's a balanced setup, 4-2-3-1, and they have that Cam who is roaming and getting on the ball, trying to feed in other teammates like Angel, who is getting in behind, and those wingers who are either staying wide and taking on their opponent or cutting inside and getting into the box. So it's a very predictable 4-2-3-1 setup, but we have to watch out because Angel is a really good striker and NDA has a lot of pace. So we're going to have to watch out for that link between that cam and these positions. Now, we're going to make a number of changes. I'm going to give starts to Lato and Moriba. And I'm also going to try out a number of different things in the attack. I'm going to put Vega on the wing. I'm going to switch Guedes to the right side, see how he does. And I'm going to see how De Kettler does at striker. I'm still looking for answers, guys, and what works best. And this is a perfect opportunity to do so. We were at it this game, guys, firing on all cylinders. And this was a blueprint of how to play Cruyff 343 Diamond in terms of playing out from the back, through the build-up, and into the chance creation. You have to use the width of the pitch, spread it as wide as possible to then create spaces in the middle and take advantage. And we did that the entire game. Moriba had the first chance, it was saved, but we were continuously pressuring them. Look at this, we switched the play, and these chances are going to be quite repeatable. We use the width of the field, and then we bring it back into the middle. This time, Gaia finds himself in the central position, and he just bangs it into the top corner, guys, 1-0, and it was beautiful to see because the left back, right back are supposed to make darting horizontal runs, and because they're set up more narrow, they find themselves in the central position. So it was great to see that work out and Gaia getting his first goal of the season, and we continued to attack Mallorca. And again, we switch to play. It's like copy-paste, looking at the same chance all over again, and you can see the triangles are working. Everyone is in position for passes, and we're regaining the ball when we lose it. Every aspect of our play is working. We cut it back this time. Kettler takes one touch, puts it into the back of the net. Easiest goal he'll ever score. And it's 2-0, guys. We are dominating Mallorca, getting anything we want. And every facet of this play is working. We stretch the play wide. Every time we look to stretch the play and then quickly move it side to side. This time, we have another opportunity on the wing. We play it back. It's another pass in. This time it's a shot from Moriba. It's a shambles from the defense. The Kettler gets on the end of it. And that's two goals for him after switching him to the striker role. So he's clearly a fish in water. Okay, so after getting completely destroyed in the first half, Mallorca wised up and finally did what I thought they were supposed to do from the beginning of the game. Direct passes. Angel gets on the end of it. And that's a belter. What a finish from Angel. And that pissed me off a little bit because I really wanted this clean sheet. And since I wasn't able to get it, I thought, okay, we're going to score as many goals as possible here. Ramp up the tempo. And it turns out I scored one of the nicest goals I've ever scored in this series. Probably in this FIFA. And it fits so well into how we want to play. A back heel here. A number of one-touch passes. Playing around the Mallorca players like they're trees. Another back heel here. Guedes gets on the end of it. And what a beautiful passing goal. That's exactly how I want to play, guys. Movement off the ball. Passing with purpose. Crisp possession attacking football. It's all you can ask for. After this, I decided, okay, let's bring on some young players. I'm confident. 4-1. It's a coasting scenario. Condredi comes on. Musa comes on. I want to promote youth in this Valencia career mode. It's a big focus of mine and increase these players overall. So I brought them on and Mallorca brought on some players, including a notable Marwan Fellaini out of all people. Where has this guy been? And he scores too. Like what is going on here? 
Where has this guy been since he's left England? I have no idea. I think he went to China briefly. But yeah, that even got me more mad. And I decided to play a little bit more loose. Wiedemann gets it. I just drove. Got a shot from distance. It's a save. And the game opened up a little bit. It was my fault. It shouldn't have. And Mallorca started playing exactly how they should have. A little bit faster. A little bit more direct. They slow it down at the end. Silasen makes a dive, which he shouldn't have because it was blocked. And then he makes a save. That's how the game ends, guys. 4-2. You know what? It was a dominant performance regardless. And that's two wins. Two good performances and throw in another decent one against Barcelona. Great episode in my opinion. Guys, if you like my content, please leave a like, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time, guys. Laters!